OK, uh, now we're talking about a new report next uh, by the British charity Help for Heroes. They're claiming that the Falklands conflict is risking becoming a lost war. Research suggests that many people are actually clueless about its details. Now, this study's been released ahead of the 40th anniversary of the war. The charity says only 4% of over, over 2,000 young adults were able to answer questions Correctly. Let's go to military historian, journalist and former serving officer, Dr. Peter Caddick Adams on this one. Uh, Dr. Adams, good morning to you. Good to talk to you. Um, why, why does the Falklands seem to be the forgotten war? Well, it was a, a one-off campaign of 77 days um, and it was fought, uh, as you've just said, 40 years ago. Um, and... The, the wars we remember are the long ones, the, the First World War and the Second World War, which lasted for years and years. Um, so a 77-day campaign is in danger because there's no other context to it uh, of being lost. I think the other important thing is the Falklands are so far away. They're 8,000 miles away. And I've been there, but I'm not sure very many other people have been uh, unless they were wearing uniform. So there's that issue as well. They're, it, they're not on our radar screen on a day-to-day -day basis. And the Falklands um, are a, a sort of one-off campaign. And the number of people who fought there um, are also relatively few. Uh, and so if you put that together, and the fact that we don't teach history, uh, it's not mandatory at uh, GCSE at, at secondary schools, no. then you can see why the Falklands, but other things away. as well, yeah. are in you know, danger of falling off. The, the, I mean, I, I agree with you with the not mandatory at school uh, business, whether it should or, or, or shouldn't be. It's a big omission. Uh, but um, where I disagree with you was it was the first telewar that Britain had. It was the introduction of video technology. It was the first war that was recorded on video as opposed to uh, film. And I, I remember that as a young reporter because it was all new technology coming back uh, from there. So it was the first tele war. It was the first time I remember news briefings. Uh, John Knott, uh, every night, the defence secretary, who infamously walked off on, on Robin Day as well. So it was TV intensive. So I suppose people my age are going to remember it because we were you know, we, we were induced uh, by it. Yeah, I mean, it's a generational thing, um, and it's also a professional thing. So everyone in the media um, would certainly remember it and would have studied it because it's the first time, uh, as you say, the TV cameras um, can go. Um, and a lot of lessons were learned from it about how much freedom um, the, the, the press have to, uh, to, to photograph, to take film, and, and to conduct their interviews uh, and there was a lot of heavy-handed censorship. But the, the wider thing is, what can we do to stop it being lost? Uh, and I think what, you know, one of the reasons, or one of the main factors, is help for heroes themselves. Because what they've done is look after veterans, pick up the, the, uh, the, 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 the safety net that really isn't there for uh, long-term veterans who suffer all sorts of different problems, um, and highlight those issues. Uh, and before Help for Heroes, there really wasn't that kind of very big, broad and, and, and good safety net in, in the same way. Um, and particularly the thing that came out of the Falklands uh, was PTSD. Um, and in other wars, we've known that as shell shock or battle fatigue. But no one has been really sure whether it was a, a physical or a mental condition and, and how to treat it. And the, this is the first war where large numbers of troops come back with a specific condition. Um, and there's then a long battle to get it recognised. And Help for Heroes have played a very good part in that. And now there's no doubt that PTSD is, is part of the collateral damage of wars and battles. And that's the real marker, I think, for the Falklands. It's not a war as such where we need to think about terrain won and lost and statistics. It's this marker that, that comes through to today. This is really where our understanding of what PTSD is all about. And that's what the Falklands brought to us. Yeah, well, there is going to be this special service on April the 2nd, on the 40th anniversary of uh, the outbreak of war. That's going to be taking place at the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire. So important to remember, as you say. Uh, Dr. Peter Caddick-Adams, always good to have you on the programme. Thank you. Thank you very much.